Hello, everybody. We are live. Hi, Stuart. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> evening Thank for me. Come beaming in all the way from London, UK. Yep. We appreciate you staying late. It's only six o'clock, so this is okay. And it's oh, actually still light, so that's amazing. Uh, you're cheating over there. Yeah. So we appreciate everybody joining. I see some of the usual suspects over in the audience. Thank you guys, as always, for joining. And welcome to our new viewers. Um, I'm totally excited to, to welcome uh, Stuart here. Stuart is the owner, operator, what do we want to call you, the CEO, the Grand Poobah? <laughs> oh, let's go for Grand Poobah. I like that. Yeah, go I'm going Grand to Poobah. I'm I'm gonna change my business cards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to do that. Uh, <laughs> from the Digital Authors Toolkit. And, you know, I was reading about you. So you've been doing this okay. for well over eight years now. You work with self-publishing formula. Mm -hmm. You're a member of Ally. Mm -hmm. and. And, and get this, everybody, he is, what is it, the number one rated author website designer on Readsy. And I can tell you, Readsy, um, they won't just let any company into their in, onto their website. They go through this incredible vetting process so that anybody that you look at um, through the Readsy site has been vetted by them. So to be the number one rated web designer on Readsy, that's, that's really saying something. So... Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very proud of that. And I've worked hard to uh, maintain my position uh, as number one on there. So um, but yeah, it's, you know, reads is fantastic platform. And uh, yeah, it's actually 5% of people that apply get accepted only 5%. So is yeah, that you're right? In, you're in a bit of an elite club if you are a provider on reads. So um, I think we can say that if I'm the top of the 5%, then I'm probably the best in the world. I mean, oh, you know, it goes without not? saying, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I wasn't absolutely <laughs> right so i just i want to jump into this um and as i told you from the very beginning from behind the scenes before we went live that i've got like a ton of just newbie questions for you so let's hop into it because i want to get to our viewers questions as well so let's sure. begin with some of the softball stuff um you know, in, in today's world, given all the social media and just different opportunities for for authors to get online and interact and use some of these social media tools, um, do authors still need an author website? You think these days, and and if so, why? Well, first of all, yes, they absolutely do. Um, and secondly, in brief, it's it's the only thing you actually own. So it's mm -hmm. your space on the internet. You're not there's you know you're not told how you need to put your content on you don't have to size your pictures in the way that somebody tells you yeah you know you can design this space to be your home you know and it's your home your rules kind of stuff and you know and a lot of people readers particularly i mean if they're looking mm -hmm. for an author the first thing they're going to do is google your name Good so point. you need something there when they look it up i mean you know, we, we've mentioned SPF already, but, you know, if you if you do Google James Blatch, for example, yep. you know, the first thing that comes up is his website. So that's going to get traffic straight away. Then they're going to go on and look at what's going on on the website and hopefully sign up to the mailing list or, or, or buy some books. You know, and again, with the with the mailing list, it's a critical, as we know, gold standard part of being an author. <clears throat> and a website is the perfect yeah. place to host that sign up. You know, it's somewhere you can direct them to. You've got complete control over it. You know exactly what's going to happen. You're not using a third party. You're using your own systems and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of a place on the net, designing it the way you want it to be and having something that says uh, all the things about you that you want to tell people, you know, a, a website is an absolutely critical part of um, an author's toolkit. And um, often underused, I think, you know, authors don't really Agree. think about the kind of impact that a website can have, you know, and I, the amount of times I've spoke to, spoken with authors and said, you know, where have you posted your website address? And they say, oh, just at the front and back of my book. Right. And I, you know, and I say, well, why isn't it on your Instagram profile? Why isn't it on your Facebook cover image? Why your isn't email it on the bottom signature. of your exactly you know there's a hundred more places you can think of you know and it's about shouting and being the loudest person in the room no one's going to listen to the person that's whispering you've got to shout you've got to make some noise and that involves talking to people about your website you know posting it on social media every second week you know you, there's no reason why you can't say have you checked out my website you know 
the new cover to xyz has just been launched it's over there so yeah i mean in terms of a, a play space you know a website is fundamental you you must have one and i think people lose readers if they don't because if i google your name and you're not there where do i go yeah i couldn't couldn't agree more and part of that being the loudest person in the room um you know that's that's part of our specialty here at drafted digital we love being the loudest people in the room but going back to the author website um it's part of your branding too isn't it it's part of your look as a professional author as a brand just as your your book cover images would be as well yeah so, um talk about these author websites what are some of the must-have elements that authors need to have on on their websites are there some things that are kind of nice to have some things that they maybe they don't really need what are the are the must-haves yeah um I mean, just circling back to your first point there, and we'll talk about it again in a minute, hopefully. But in terms of branding, you know, I I really switched on to this about two years ago when I realized that I was making websites that were kind of the standard sort of look. You know, they had a white background, book covers, sign up mm -hmm. box, etc. And suddenly I realized that they weren't branded in the way that the books were. So ah. my my kind of principle now is to make the the website as much sort of an immersive experience for the reader as the book cover so it's got to have all the same Love tropes it. that you'd expect on a book you know you want people to land on your website and go i get it it's a science fiction novel or i get it it's a horror novel or whatever and so my job is to kind of create an environment or atmosphere around the books and whatever else is on there which we'll talk about um but you know it's to make that feel like the brand so that i recognize it it looks maybe i may even use the backgrounds of the books you know to create yeah. the, the website to bring that all together i'm really you know kind of in the park for keeping things like similar so you know having the same font that's on your book as mm -hmm. on your website, you know, and kind of streamlining, lining all that stuff. So that as a reader, I really get drawn into your brand and your experience. Um, and that I recognize those things. So we talk a lot about tropes on book covers. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I talk a lot about tropes on websites, you know, and having those exist so that people know instantly what it is and that they recognize you as, a, as an author. Um, so I'm sorry, I jumped back to a question there, but, no in terms perfect. so in terms of what you asked um you know what should be on a on a website i mean there's some really fundamental stuff obviously we've talked already about the mailing list but you've got to have a sign up form or a way to sign up so pointing them to you know book funnel or wherever it is that you're you're gathering the emails but you've got to have that information on there and i would also suggest that you've got to try and have a lead magnet of some sort okay you know we need to encourage people to sign up and you know we're all signed up to a billion emails you know from blimmin whoever and um you know i get some over here in the uk from woucher and all these weird and wonderful emails and we're a bit overwhelmed so people are a bit tentative i think they're a bit fatigued by an email so you've got to give them a really kind of convincing and compelling reason to sign up whether it's the first chapter of your book whether it's okay. the first book whether it's something more off piste um so for example i believe that mark dawson when he originally started doing his mailing list um created like a um a police report for his main character like a redacted oh, cool. just a made up one and james does a um a pretend if you like made up um crash report for an aircraft so it doesn't have to be this really onerous task of writing another book but yes certainly on your website you've got to have a place for people to sign up and join join you you know that that you want this warm audience in your in your group so you can say hey i hope you love book one here's book two um so an author bio is is another kind of under <clears throat> thought about um thing i mean i love finding out backstage information about authors actors you oh, know yeah, i love musicians I, everybody yeah i'll always watch the backstage stuff you know on netflix yeah. or whatever i love the kind of behind the scenes and i think that's a bit of an under kind of discovered territory for authors and some are a bit afraid of doing it. and obviously there are questions sure. around if you have a pen name what do you say and what do you do but for, let's just talk about authors that are themselves and using their names you know i think sharing your life experience telling the story of who you are how you got here you know being brave enough to share all of that is fascinating i mean um lee child for example has got an actual book out i think called um lee said nothing or something which is basically you know a biography of his life and as soon as it came out i was down you know 
to Kindle, picking it up and reading it because I wanted to know more. So never be afraid to share, you know, your author bio on your website. Um, if it's long, you know, you can have a jump to it on the front page. You know, yeah. this is Stuart Grant. He was brought up in Cincinnati and he lived in, you know, a cow shed. And if you want to read more, click here. And then it goes to a much longer kind of explanation. But, you know, including photos, you know, you don't want to overshare. No, none of us necessarily want to share pictures of our dinner. But, <laughs> you know, whatever it is that you feel would connect with your audience, you know, and I've had a really interesting thought process over the last few weeks, actually, a month about what um, person the bio should be written in, whether it should be first or third. Oh, that's because, interesting. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, if you're trying to establish a relationship, I quite like the idea of using the I, yeah. you know, hey, guys, great to meet you. I've been in this. I've done this. I've done that and the other. Like and you're I think having that, a chat, you know, at the pub or yeah, at a conference. Make it much more informal. Personal. The advantage of third person is that it kind of feels then maybe more like a publisher's written it for you, you know, and they're kind of marketing you. So, you know, Stuart Grant was born up in the background. Yeah. So it kind of depends on you and your attitude and your kind of perspective. But I think there's two decisions. There's a decision to be made there about how you pitch it. Um, mm -hmm. And you could try both, you know, and see, see what generates more traffic or, or more interaction. Um, the other thing, obviously, is your books. You know, I mean, yeah. that's a fairly obvious addition to your website you want to showcase those beautiful covers that you've paid hundreds of dollars yep. for you know they're they're works of art and i think again they're underused yep. you know they get shrunk down to this sort of size on amazon you know and if you buy, yeah and you, you know if you buy one you've got the art on the on the wall kind of thing but you know if you don't you that's all you ever see so enlarging them and making them kind of prominent on your website is really good practice um, you want to draw people into those. Um, we've said mailing list sign up again. That can be in multiple places as well, not just on your home page, but all over the place. Don't be afraid to drop it in at the footer yeah. so it's on every page. You know, um, a blog. Now this is an interesting one because I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to ask you what you thought. Yeah. Right. So there's there's multiple thinking around this, and um, authors always ask me. And the first thing I say when someone says, "Do you think I should have a blog?" I say, have you got enough time to write one? <laughs> you know, would you not rather be writing a book that actually puts money on the table um, mm -hmm. rather than a blog, which is going to take up loads of your time? And if you're lucky, someone's going to read it. You know, there was the golden age of blogging, obviously. Yep. And it's still popular and it still helps with SEO and it still helps to show activity on your website if you publish one every month or whatever um <clears throat> but most authors haven't got the time or the inclination to write one so you know lots of authors do but some don't so it's about you and your ca capacity and you know i i what i've always thought with i use wix exclusively to build my websites and one yeah. of the advantages of that is that when you've written the blog you can schedule it which you can do on most blogging sites to be honest so you okay. could actually if you're feeling inspired you know you could write five and then schedule them for the next five weeks so you've got that kind of momentum um instead of thinking oh god what am i going to write about today you could do a, a a job lot um contact form i think again we underestimate just how much our readers want to speak to us and say hello yeah. and you know it, you, if you don't give them the opportunity you won't ever establish relationships with people and i know that many authors have had a contact form out of the blue from somebody that says I don't know. Hey, you know, Stu, I really love your crime books and I'm a ex police officer. If you ever want any information, I'd be more than happy to help. Boom. You know, you've just won an absolute game changer, you know, and if you haven't got that contact form and encourage people again, how many authors actually ever say, Hey guys, you know, I'd love to hear from you. Get in touch yes. with me, whether it's, you know, on Facebook or whatever. So another opportunity to get people driven to your site is to and ask a question, you know, ask, say, you know, I'd love to know who you think should play my lead character. Why don't you drop me a message in my love contact it. form? Something like that, just to generate that activity and, and traffic to your site and also to use the contact form. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, what else have we got? Um, this is one that's. Keep going, going. Keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm just I don't want to interrupt you because you're on your you've got this great <laughs> flow going. I'm now almost for writing down notes myself. <laughs> oh, let me have a drink <laughs> uh, he's gonna take a drink everybody time out yeah there we go um right. 
a couple of other i mean they're the kind of fundamentals you know yeah. author bio books maybe an author photo mailing list sign up possibly a blog contact page other little things you could have maybe is a media page again a bit a bit underthought you know people don't put on that yeah put, cut and paste the opportunity you know when you went on a podcast or when the local press did a, a, a thing about you or yep. whatever you need or you something an award there for your book something like yeah. that yeah and most authors have done something, yeah. you know, whether it's even just a local radio appearance or a local paper or whatever. So, yep. you know, have that page there so people can see you've been active. Um, you know, I, I think even I've suggested to authors to set up even a secondary email address and put it on the on the media page to make it look like you're represented by an agent, you know, <laughs> if you want to and stuff like that. Um, and one other thing that I saw that somebody asked me for, which I think is a really good idea, was a PDF for book clubs. So I don't know how active book clubs are, but you could have a They're a definitely resource. getting more popular, at least over here. Yeah. So you could have a resource on your site that's just got a very simple PDF with just some questions, you know, about the lead character or the book or the that's environment or idea. whatever it is. So just, you know, hey, guys, if you're in a book club, I'd love to give you my PDF that tells you about, how, you know, and you might get loads of clubs start reading your book. Mm -hmm. So it works for you and it works for them. So, you know, that's just a little kind of throwaway idea about um what you could put on your site so that's the fundamentals really i think you know there's lots of other little bits and pieces that people put on but they're the things that you should really set off to do i love it i love it great information there i wanted to back up a little bit um because our authors our viewers here they run the gamut from first timers who haven't published their first book uh, to others who have published dozens and dozens already but i wanted to go back to a couple of the key points that you made um, especially the similarities between book cover design and website design because mm -hmm. at Amazon or Apple Books or any other online retailer, your book cover images are going to be these little stamp size images. <laughs> Yet it's all it's all branding. It's it's um, it's your opportunity to give a promise to your readers out there that it's both marketing and content. This that promise being that this book is exactly the book that you're searching for right now but with your mm -hmm. website design you're going to keep that all congruent and related so that you have even more of an opportunity to tell them these are the types of books that yeah. are ideally pre um, built for you written for you yep exactly uh, now i noticed that on and everybody else here if you've watched uh um self-publishing formula before and, and listen to the podcast there there's that there's the tagline never been a better time to be a writer and i think it's twofold for that because there are so many just opportunities and options now for authors to get their books out into the world but i think the other thing that isn't talked about as much that you've already hit upon is the idea of author engagement because with author engagement too there are so many opportunities and options out there you've already talked about a lot of that but I remember back in the early days of self-publishing, 2008 and 2009, it seemed like author engagement or the ability to engage with your readers seemed like it was the holy grail. And I think indies in particular have such a wonderful opportunity to engage with your readers and send them over to your newsletters um, and keep your readers after you make a book sale so that for the next time you release a book, those readers are going to come with you. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's... <coughs> It's human nature, isn't it, to want to know more? And um, you know, whenever I read a book, I'm I'm the I'm an author's, you know, dream because I will always read the first one, then go off and hunt for the next, you know, one, and so on and so forth. And if I'm joined up to a, a mailing list and they can email me and say, you know, my next book's out. You know, I'm a massive fan of J.D. Kirk, who writes kind of regional crime over here, well, internationally, but about Scotland mm. particularly. And I'm a massive fan of one of his streams, um, the Hoon series. And I'm like, literally every time an email from him comes in, I'm like, is it the next one? <laughs> oh, you know, because I want that next one so badly. And so, you know, that's the kind of kind of environment that you can create with your readers if you've got this powerful mailing list and, you know, website for them to sign up on. Okay. Um, now you mentioned uh, um, creating ex ex like beyond reader engagement. Um, I've heard you mention the idea of not only creating a, a way to engage with your readers, but creating an experience on a website. How do you go about creating an experience on the website? On a website. 
yeah great question and uh, you know that is one of my usps i think you know not everybody's going to like this but my my principle is that i want the um experience of the website to really shout out about the style and the genre of the book so Mm -hmm. you know if i've got let's say a haunting thriller writer who writes about supernatural houses or whatever you know when they land on that website i want that top banner to be lightning strikes and moody clouds and you know that whole Mm. kind of whoa i know exactly what this is and i love it you know that reader in yeah and i think you've got to think more like a filmmaker as well you know you've got to think about that kind of you know that that's why filmmakers make trailers and use images um and i also look around a lot of trends in terms of website building and you know if you go to um apple for example you're going to see very kind of kinetic energetic landing pages that move and things swap over and the earphones turn around and you know it's about kind of drawing you in and thinking about the architecture of the site to draw your eye as well you know i want people to look because something's moved or you know or there's a background that's really cool or whatever so i try and work around the idea of making things animated lots of motion lots of video backgrounds you know, some people want to turn it down a bit. Some people want to turn it up a bit. You know, I'm all for that. So that's my kind of principle around creating this immersive experience on every page that it draws you in and you know exactly what type of book you're looking at. I love it. So it's not just about looking cool. There are some of those animations and movement actually have a purpose, kind of move your eyes. Yeah. And, you know, you'll, 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 Your website's got to breathe. It's got to be alive. Otherwise, you might as well just go around and hand out leaflets. You know, it's got to do something different and be interesting. And I think that is one way to make it really engaging and, you know, more of an experience. Okay. I see. um, I'm trying to keep my one eye on comments coming in so we don't miss any of those. There's quite a few. um, And we're already 20 minutes into it. So I want to make sure that we get to some of these questions and comments uh, before time runs out on us. So let me bring up this first one. This is from Claire. Thanks for your comment and question, Claire. Um, I want to learn how to do commerce too, but first make a really good website. So we, can we kind of start getting into the whole commerce aspect of it? Because yeah. direct sales, man, is like all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> People are talking uh, yeah. about it. Yeah, time for me to go. See, you. no, no, no. <laughs> right. um, it's, you know, it's become a really big topic in the last year, really, even mm. um, partly due to Joanna Penn. Yep. kind of kicking it all off and others as well but you know she's been one of the proponents of direct sales and um you know i'm a great believer in that obviously as well um my only caveat to that is that i okay. get newbie authors coming up and saying you know i want a website and i want to sell direct and i say you know how many books have you got and they say two okay and i'm like y- you're just not going to have the audience the warm audience at this point to generate the sales to to justify the cost okay. of building it or whatever you know it's when you put your books on amazon or other marketplaces obviously they are the biggest marketplaces in the world they have organic traffic yes you know that is there already and it gets suggested to readers you know if you like this book you can like this one so they do a lot of that work for you whereas if you have it on your website direct sales you've got to do all of that work yourself you've got to point okay. people to your website and you must make noise otherwise no one will visit and no one will buy anything you know when when it comes to somebody like joe who's got a huge audience you know and she says hey guys you know i'm launching this print on demand book would you like a copy inevitably she's going to get lots of sales and it's going to be a success for her with the sort of younger authors if you like i think it's Mm -hmm. it can be a little bit overwhelming i mean let's face it we were just talking about this before that you know the process of publishing a book is scary enough as it is you know on amazon or wherever or using draft to digital you know is lots of moving parts and to throw in an e-commerce aspect to all of that as well is you know a nightmare and it's yeah. you know not necessarily cost effective i mean i i've just partnered up with book vault who you may have spoken to or heard of before and they mm-hmm. they're based in the uk but they've got a us operation so they do print on demand yeah, including you know hardback uh paperback uh you can sell ebooks using uh book funnel with them you can do a whole range of things and merchandise as well which is another interesting topic for authors um you know and i'm able to put their front end on my website or the website if you like and then readers come in and just click the button and off it goes and that's free 
excuse me, that's free. Whereas if you go to a Shopify or something like that, you know, you're looking at a minimum of like 25 bucks, 29 bucks a month that's just to have for, the like, platform. Just to get started? Yeah. Okay. So you've, you've got to make that back just yep. to even justify the store in a sense, you know. So I think, you know, it's brilliant. Let's, you know, let's all sell ourselves, you know, and, you know, make a little bit more money and all the rest of it if you're not spending out to do that in the first place. Yeah. And if you've got the audience that's going to go to your website to actually buy it, you know, I think some authors bless them in a sense, think that they launch their book and everyone's going to want a T-shirt, you know, <laughs> everyone's going to buy every book they've ever written. Whereas we know that it's not, you know, sometimes it can be a bit of an anticlimax. And I, I feel like sometimes I say to authors, just don't run before you can walk you know, get familiar with the basics and what you're doing to start with, you know, sell on Amazon for a bit, yeah. you know, <clears throat> go into KU, see if that helps. And then when you've done all that, you know, then yeah. think about direct sales. I'm not saying don't do it. So please don't shout at me. But I'm just saying I think a tempered approach to it at this point is a very good call. <laughs> I think that's I think that's wise advice, because as authors, who, especially those who are you know, like the viewers here, um, they're trying to get as much information as they possibly can when it comes from the experts, when it comes to marketing and publishing their books. And um, I can't tell you how many times I've had authors come up to me at conferences and ask my opinions on whether or not they should pay for um, audiobook narration from a professional actor. And my first question is, well, do you understand uh, the potential costs for that and that you need to earn that money back? Um, and my next question is typically, are your readers clamoring for that? If your readers are asking for you, if they're, if they're constantly bombarding you with requests for an audiobook, then absolutely positively, it's probably time for you to look into going down that path. But you always have to keep in mind your earned back. What's your return on investment for anything that you do when it comes to marketing and publishing your books? Here's another yeah, one. I want... Oh, it. sorry. Uh, question from Rand, our buddy Randall, who we just saw, or who I just saw a couple of days ago. <laughs> Hi, Randall. Do you use heat mapping, Randall wants to know, to help know where to make improvements on your website? Hi, Randall. Uh, yes, I have done. I don't use it as a matter of course, um, but I have used it, and it is very interesting. Um, I think it can be a little bit misleading at times. People tend to click in all weird and wonderful places. They tend to click on things. So if you've got a book cover, it's most likely somebody will click on it just to see what it does. You know, they'll click buttons. And it's, and I think sometimes we leave too much to the uh, imagination as well. I think <laughs> I don't mean this rudely, but I'll be rude. You know, some some people are a bit dim and they need a bit more guidance in terms of the website. So you need to say, click here to get my blah rather than just read more you need to actually tell them that it's clickable <laughs> it's part of the dim crowd i'm just raising my on behalf of all the dim out there <laughs> <laughs> no and i mean i'm i'm the same you know i don't always do it. but yes being a bit more explicit about what you can do and click click this and click that so yes heat mapping for anyone that doesn't know there's software out there that you can basically watch what people do on the website where they go where they click mm -hmm. and their kind of movement and it's very interesting and it's a free there's a few free ones out there if you wanted to try them um, but yes, they can be really useful. Good question, Randall. Thanks. Go up to the next question here uh, from Beth. Thank you for your question, Beth. Beth asks, can you repurpose your email newsletter for your blog? Well, yes. I mean, that's a great question and a great idea because, again, I use Wix exclusively. And one of the things I love about Wix um, particularly is that when you write a blog and you publish it, it says, do you want to send this blog post to all of your subscribers with one click? Mm -hmm. Bosh, off it goes. And then so if, if authors do want a blog and they have used that system, I say to them, write the blog as if it's a newsletter. And then you've only got to write one thing. So yeah. you're getting two, two for the price of one. You know, you turn your blog into a newsletter and vice versa. So, yes, I think that's absolutely, you know, the right thing to do. And I think that's a great way of reusing your newsletter content and your blog content. Do it both ways. Excellent. Thanks for that. I'm going to keep going here with the questions. Keep those questions coming, everybody. I love it. Lots of engagement here. Tispiration Station. <laughs> Great name <laughs> and photo. Um, the question is, how do you highlight books on your website if you are a multi-genre author? 
yeah you know this is the bane of my life when i get a you know somebody Great comes question. to me and says yeah you know can you build me a website i'm like yeah sure and they say i've got 12 series you know yeah. <laughs> it's like oh my god you know how do we compend mark comp you know divide up the website some big word whatever the yeah. word is yeah um you know and it's um it can be tricky you know i did actually have a a, a customer that uh, wrote erotica and children's i mean you know how the hell sorry so, about that um, yeah so was, what um fiction you know it's difficult so i think what um what i try and do is create the landing page to really be clear about the options available and in that instance we actually put a tick box to say i'm over 18 and i can access this you know whatever so we tried to kind of protect it that way but yes it can be difficult but in terms of you know you'd have a landing page that says you know are you here for the thrillers or are you here for the cozy mystery you ah, know with a book okay. cover of each and they can then click through to the kind of secondary landing page for that series but always making sure you've got a button on that page to go back to the other one because you know readers love writers and they're likely to read around your content yeah. so don't just send them over there and leave them there give them a way back to find the other stuff you write um and it is tricky there's no two ways about it when you've got multiple genres but it's not impossible and actually i you know hopefully i've made some really lovely sites that do divide up those kind of genre issues really clearly and, uh -huh. and sort of succinctly okay i I'm glad she asked the question because I was wondering if um, like what you would do in that situation, if you would recommend an author create a secondary website, like just a completely different website uh, for a different, let's say if, if an author had multiple pen names. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a really common problem. And yeah. it, instinctively I'd say if you've only got a few books in each, don't do that mm -hmm. because you're just adding to your trauma of having to build two websites, two mailing lists, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I have had, again, clients who've yeah. got, you know, a horror genre and then they write really sassy kind of erotic, not erotica, but romance. So very okay. different. And they have got two separate websites with two different pen names, you know. So yep. I think it depends on who you are, what you're doing and how much you want to cross fertilize each audience. You know, they may not work together, but some of the time they do, you know. So there's no reason why you can't have more than one genre on one website but okay i think that just answered this question i did I get this do we get this right christina uh she says what about authors who have multiple pen names separate websites linked together somehow what if genres are super different yeah again it is it is tricky you know there's no golden tablet here that i can give okay. the answer but i think it depends on how much you want to cross fertilize your audiences how appropriate it is to do that in some yep. instance it really isn't um and how easy it is to do you know is it possible to make it so that you can really divide them up clearly okay. um it is a pain you know the idea of having to boot up another website you know is is you know a pain it costs you know and everything else but yeah it kind of depends on who you are and what you've got to offer i think okay when authors first engage with you Stuart, do they do you have like a like a sort of a kickoff uh, kickoff call or, or a free consult or something like that where you can just really talk about the different nuances that they may have to go through and then just figure out a path from there? Is there yes and no. Or do they just email you first and tell you what they need? Yes, that's I have a proposal uh, quote page on my website where people fill in all the questions, you know, what's your genre and what are your thoughts around design, blah, blah, blah. Um, if I'm honest, uh, I've learned now after two 250 300 sites that actually leave it to me to some extent i'm really happy to hear what you want and the things that you're looking okay. for but don't be prescriptive you know don't i don't want to necessarily have that heart that 15 minute call that turns into an hour where the author is like and what i really want is this over here and that up there and i want this over here and you know and i'm like well you know why don't you do it yourself in a sense because you know that's what you're paying me to do is right. think think like a reader and think you know you think like an author who's written the books you're very biased let me do my thing to some extent so um yeah in terms of my routine it's i get them to fill in the thing and i say just leave it with me i'll show you what i've done if you like it great if you don't we can change it to what you do want okay yeah i love that especially the point about let the author do their thing yeah okay i can't write books you know so 
that's why people employ me to make the website that's what i do and it reminds fun. me of my rock band days where like you know being fresh out of the garage band and going to you know our first recording uh, session and having the you know trying to tell the producer what to do and he's like done this a million times <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, but we know yeah. better yeah, yeah totally that's exactly it and uh yeah okay um this is we kind of answered this one already but i wanted to pop it up there just in case someone joined late or someone's listening um to the podcast do you accept erotica asked kiyami did i pronounce your, your name correctly and i've seen your name you know in, in other episodes hello and thank you for joining us um do you accept erotica do I? Um, yeah, I'll, blimey, I'll do anything, to be honest. Right. <laughs> I've done all sorts, you know, from nonfiction okay. to hot thigh clenching erotica to, you know, very, very kid friendly stuff. I mean, I, I love doing a various, you know, a variety of stuff. So absolutely. Yeah. You know, I might even read one if it's um, good. <laughs> but yeah, an erotic comedy. I mean, that sounds brilliant. I love it. Um, <laughs> so, yes, I'll accept anything, really. I've got no. Uh, no shame. What about templates? If an author comes to you and they've either they're maybe they already have a website that they built off of a template. Do you have any thoughts about templates and how to use them and why an author may want to use them? What yeah. And I mean, there's been um, a lot of kind of thinking around templates and it became a dirty word at one point, you know, I don't want to use a template. And yeah. then people go off and they buy one, you know, because especially with something like WordPress, um, you have to get a template, really. You have okay. to get something that starts you off because WordPress isn't really a thing. It's just a framework. And then you have to pile okay. all the other stuff on it, you know. And I mean, Wix isn't like that, really. I mean, there are lots of templates that you can choose, but I always start blank. But even when I have used templates, you know, I never leave it looking like the template. That's the thing. It's, sure. it's a guide. It's not supposed to be, you know, the thing you leave it as. Just put your book covers on and done. It's supposed to be something that inspires you and you move things around. So, you know, I can hand on heart say that if I've ever used a, a template, you know, from Wix, that it looks nothing like what it started as. Um, there's nothing wrong with templates. They can be really helpful if you don't really know how to lay things out. It might give mm -hmm. you some ideas of again the architecture of, a, of an author site so you know dig in go and you know get them but um they don't have to stay you know as they started okay. for sure can an author come to you who already has a template and let me rephrase that question by saying what what does an author need uh, when they come to you the first time if anything good book covers i mean okay. that is my absolute golden rule that's my starting point for this you know process I have to have a book cover to start the design. And, you know, I've had I've had to wait months for people who say I want a website. And I say, well, I'm really happy to do that for you. But I must have your at least first book um, for all the reasons we've talked about. You know, I want it yeah. to be the same. I want it to be branded the same. And, um, you know, we've all seen, you know, my first book cover made in words, you know, and I've had to have those conversations with people and say, this is doing you no favors. You know, you need a pro book cover. Um, so that's my kind of starting point. You must have a book cover. And I have made the mistake of starting a website and the person didn't have a website, uh, a book cover. I made this beautiful website. They then got the book cover like two months later and it was a completely different color, oh, and, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, Oh my yeah. God, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't fit. So yeah, that's, um, so that's the process, really. Just send me all the stuff you've got, and I'll work out what I'm going to do with it. Okay. Do you feel authors are getting better at building their own websites these days as opposed to maybe five, seven, ten years ago? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be out of a job in ten years because everyone will be doing it themselves. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say the two letters that everyone's talking about, but, you know, with the advent of AI, you know, there's going to be, and I can't, you know... I, it's going to happen that you're going to get a, a software. Wix is even going to launch one where you put in, you know, I want a science fiction author website and it will go bing, you know, and there it is and it will be done for you. So, yeah, you know, that might put me out of a job. Who knows? People still love people. So, you know, I'm hoping they'll still want to talk to somebody rather than an AI. But yes, I mean, you know, that is an absolute inevitability that that kind of thing comes through at some point in the future. Not too distant, I think, either. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I would also um, add to that and that like we've seen author, um, you know, but we've seen authors just improve over the years, getting better and better and better. Oh, uh, sorry. More, yeah. More, more professionally savvy. Um, you know, I remember 
between 2008 and 2010, where authors were just so intoxicated by the idea of finally being able to self-publish their books. But when you saw their uh, their book cover designs the first few times, <laughs> um, oh, they left yeah. a little bit to be desired. But today, oh my gosh, a first-time author will produce a book cover image that's that stands, you know, neck and neck with those coming out of uh, coming out of New York and London. Absolutely. I mean, it's incredible what you can get now. Yep. You know, it really is. There's um, a fantastic, um, I'm not affiliated in any way, but I found a really brilliant site the other day called, what's it called? Book Cover Zone, I think. Um, and it's got loads of pre-mades on it. Yeah. And you choose the pre-made and you just overwrite your name and the thing, you know, and they are fantastic and was cheap. That, I mean, Was that self-pub book covers? Oh, that's the other one that's really good as well. Yeah, that's brilliant. Self-pub book covers. Yes. <clears throat> um, <laughs> but there's lots there's there's lots out there anyway. And um, but yeah, I think everyone realizes or most people now realize that, you know, you've got to be business minded. You've got to think pro. Yes, you've do. got to be professional. You've got to have the best that you can get and invest in your career. You know, this is not a free service. You've got to kind of sign up with the, with the imp with the idea that you've got to spend some money. Yep. Um, and hopefully that will give return on investment. Sure. I'm going to show um, this que a second question from Claire. Uh, thanks again, Claire. She says, which websites do you recommend? You've already spoken a bit about, about Wix. Uh, she says, I use w WordPress, but I'm not sure if it's the best or not. Any other recommendations, Stu? Okay, so this is another bit of a hot topic. You see, the thing about WordPress is it's got such a heritage and legacy because years ago it was pretty much the only thing around so everybody used it and today even people say to me oh yeah but 70 percent of all websites are built on um or sorry 30 percent of all websites are built on wordpress and i say yeah well that means 70 percent aren't you know and and f to my mind for good reason i find wordpress completely unwieldy I find it, you know, really complicated, not intuitive. It doesn't come bundled with all the stuff that I would expect for certainly for an author. Hmm. You've got okay. plugins that go out of date. If you want it to do certain things, you need to pay for a plugin, which then, you know, if you've got loads of third party plugins, they've got vulnerabilities. It's much easier to hack. So, yeah, I'm not a great fan, if I'm totally honest. I mean, it can create some really cool websites and do some great stuff. But for most authors, I think it's way beyond what they need. Oh. Um, and, you know, there are a couple of others that I've tab dabbled with. Um, Strikingly is another kind of drag and drops type system like Wix. Bit Strikingly cheaper. it's called? Strikingly, yeah. Okay. I think they're US based as well. And there's Weebly and, you know, a few others. But I did a lot of research because I didn't want to be working with something that I found cumbersome. You know, I wanted to be working with something that was fast, intuitive, that I could teach other people to use. You know, and I settled on Wix and I'm so glad I did. They are yeah. innovating. They are changing. They have superseded any other service. I think Squarespace is the other one that often people will refer to mm. in the same breath as Wix. But yes, I mean, to my mind, I am biased, but you know, Wix is the one. Yeah. We want to hear what you have to say about that kind of stuff. for Sure. Yeah, that's, that is. And you know, I've done, like I said, hundreds of websites now and I've moved many authors off of WordPress or Squarespace or whatever. And all of them without exception come back to me and say, Oh my God, I'm so glad I made the move. You know, yeah, I really am because it's so much easier to use. I understand it. A lot of authors let their websites go out of date really yeah. badly because they just can't face logging on and going, where do I put that? How does it go over here? Oh, I need a bit of code. What are you talking about? Yeah. You know, it's horrible. And I totally get that. So I'm trying to provide a platform that does a lot of the thinking for you. And it's just about you moving it around, you know, and you know, Wix comes folded in with 200 free emails a, a month. It sounds like a big advert for Wix. It's not, but it's just my experience of, you know, what I'm sharing with authors. Um, so there's loads of benefits to it. Whereas sure. WordPress can be, difficult no i think that's good advice be. because authors they need the easy button because they need to spend their time writing books not trying to figure out how to work a particular website platform yes exactly exactly okay. i'm um, gonna um bring up this question from from sd um comment and question pop-ups they completely <laughs> annoy me <laughs> and i've left a website with multiple pop-ups like get your free plan now uh, but i keep hearing that they are a great conversion tool thoughts 
again another kind of divisive <laughs> um topic and uh it is personal opinion i've had authors come to me and say i want a pop-up you know i want my sign up box to pop up when people land on the yeah. on the page so and when I, I talked earlier about kind of drawing the eye and the architecture of a site and pop-ups can be brilliant for actually well okay you know i need to do this before i move on I, i'm drawn to do it you know inevitably want to see what it says and you know i'm going to put my name in because they're giving me a free book they can be brilliant you know if they're used correctly at the right time in the right place you know and they do the right thing i think you know loads of websites have multiple pop-ups like this uh, lady says or uh, sd hudson hudson um yes. so yeah that can be annoying okay i'm gonna bring up one more question and then we're Gosh, this went by like that. This, this. <laughs> uh, okay, thanks, Samantha, for your question. Samantha asks, what are your thoughts on Shopify? This is my current avenue. Still in the building process. Yeah, I mean, you know, Shopify is brilliant. It's super, uh, super powerful. It's got lots of features. And I think, you know, there's lots to be said for it. Lots of um, proponents of Shopify as well in the community who are selling direct and what have you. Um, I haven't really got into i've looked at it i've built a couple of websites doing it and it can be really quite powerful but again my heart just comes back to what i'm doing which is you know wix offers e-commerce i'm using book vault as the kind of deliverer of the um of the actual product okay um you know and i will be using draft to digital of course because you just started doing print and um <laughs> you know and so yes i mean shopify you know there is a cost associated with it obviously so that that does affect your decision you know do you want to pay another 25 bucks a month to have a shopify store and learn another platform or whatever there's absolutely nothing wrong with it it does a great job it can be really powerful it's got lots of neat little things like email automations and stuff like that you know you can set it up so if people don't fill in the car it'll email them and say why didn't you fill in the car you know yeah. kind of cool stuff like that so yes it's brilliant um just not my choice um at this point it might change but uh yeah for me again it's um wix and book vault okay well we appreciate that um everybody i just wanted to tell you just i wanted to give you just a quick word of thanks because what an engaged group this time around just a ton of brilliant. comments ton of questions we really really appreciate that because it helps keep our conversations moving here and keeps everybody engaged um we've come to a close here so just want to remind everybody to please like share comment and subscribe to self-publishing insiders this helps us grow our audience and keep attracting awesome guests like Stuart here. <laughs> and if you like, be sure to bookmark DDD Live. If you go to the dddlive.com website, you'll see uh, a countdown timer for every week so you can see what the topic is. And I think you can also see who the guest is going to be for the next weeks. And if you're not yet a draft to digital author, why not sign up for your free draft to digital account today by simply going to draft to digital.com. We are now coming to a close. I want to thank everybody once again for your time today. Um, Stuart, if you could stick around for a few seconds, I'm going sure. to run a quick little draft to digital commercial spot. But everybody else, once again, thanks from the bottom of our hearts for joining today. And we will see you thank again. Thank you, guys. Sorry, Stuart, didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no, just thanks so much for having me. It's been brilliant. I've really enjoyed all the questions and talking to you. So, yeah, thanks again for having me. Brilliant. You bet. It's our pleasure. And we're lucky to have you here today. Um, appreciate you. Ebooks are great, but there's just something about. Ebooks are great, but there's just something about having your words in print. Something you can hold in your hands, put on a shelf, sign for a reader. That's why we created D2D Print, a print on demand service that was built for you. We have free, beautiful templates to give your book a pro look, and we can even convert your ebook cover into a full wraparound cover for print. So many options for you and your books. And you can get started right now at draft2digital.com.